Aloha and welcome. I am Unity, e, and this is another TR8S, TR6S tutorial. But in this video, I'm bringing you something a little new. It's the brand new standalone software from Roland, the TR Editor. This is a kit and pattern editor and software librarian. Allows you to organize and manage and transport and tweak and play with your kits and patterns right on your computer without the use of a DAW or anything else. It's super simple to set up. Just simply go to the Rowan Cloud, download the new TR Editor software. When you get it, you will go through the installer, install the software per your operating system. Also make sure that you have the most up-to-date firmware for your TR8S and your TR6S. The TR8S having 2.03 or higher and the TR6S at 1.02 or higher. If you have those installed and operating on your devices and you have the drivers for your computer, you're good to go. Simply go to your computer and find that application for the TR editor and click the start icon. You will see upon opening it, a little homepage for the Roland Cloud. You can log in here and browse around without leaving this application. But what you're going to want to do is connect your TR-8S or your 6S by USB to the computer. No need to hold anything down, no shift button, nothing like that. Just connect the USB and you're good to go. Once you've done that, go ahead and click device select. And this nice little window will pop up called select device. Whichever device you have plugged in will show up in this menu. I have both of them. So as you can see, you can choose which one you want to edit and go to it. We'll pick TR8S for this video. In a future one, I'll quickly run over the TR6S one to show you some of the uh, interface differences. And that's about it. Okay, so let's get into it. TR8S. You see on the screen it says detected, which is a good sign. It says the TR8S and it will tell you the version of the firmware that you have currently installed. As long as it's 2.03 or above on the 8S, you're good to go. A little progress bar of it talking back and forth to the device, but getting all the patterns and all the kits off it and getting ready. Once this is finished, you'll see the editor light up and you can simply click it and away you go. Once you open that up, you'll be presented with this screen right here, where at the top left you have the name of your pattern and the kit. You can simply click on this screen to choose your pattern and kit. This window will come up, a pattern kit select. This tab is all your patterns. Simply click the one you want to edit. And kit is this tab. Again, simply click the one you want to edit. Once you have chosen the one you want, go ahead and hit close. It'll make sure to load those kits and patterns right into the editor here. If it doesn't, you can click the get button and it will go get them. If you're making stuff here to ensure that it does get transferred over to your TR8S, go ahead or 6S, you hit send and that will go ahead and send all that information. And to write is kind of a uh, save as you go because of the tweaking you can do in here, you are going to get to points where you might want to save it to make sure you don't accidentally delete that kind of stuff or uh, forget about it and close it and don't save. Also, very new feature here, the undo redo in the editor. Now you can sequentially undo all the steps of any tweaks you have made. This is an awesome feature to have and quickly allows you to either A, B something that you've done to hear the differences a little better with the undo redo or to take steps back through the tweaks you may have done to get back to the sound you had originally. Great use. Way to go Roland on that one. Moving down, you'll see there's five tabs here. You have overall instrument, EFX, which is your effects, kit, and pattern. We'll quickly get into each one. The overall looks very much similar to your device with your accent knob, reverb knob, but you now have a time knob here, which the shortcut on the 8S is to hold the kit button and turn the reverb level knob, and that will adjust the reverb time. Moving on, on the delay, same as the knobs on your device, level, time, and feedback, your master effects button and knob, and the autofill button and knob. Tempo is up here where your screen would be, but this is where you'll find your tempo and your shuffle for the pattern you are playing. 
Down below that, you'll see a list of the names of each instrument on each track. If you wish to change it, all you have to do is simply click the name. You'll be brought up with a screen called Inst Select. It will tell you which one you are currently on. It will give you the choice to filter out or filter in either ACB, FM tones, samples, or user uh, samples that have been brought in. You have categories to choose from, including it looks like we'll have some user categories. Could be interesting. Moving to the right, you'll see there's an icon, which is just like in the top left when you're selecting on your devices. The type of tone it is, is it a PCM sample? Is it an FM tone? Is it an ACB? Those are what you're gonna find. And then the name of the instrument. Fun little thing is when you do select one of the ACB tones, depending on the model it's after, you'll get a little bit of uh, information about the TR-909 when you click, an, or click on a 909. Do the 808, you get a little picture and a little info on the 808. Uh, same thing with all these ACBs. Clicking on an FM tone gives you a little information about the frequency modulation synthesis that is being used uh, to make these drum tones. And of course, this PCM, the samples, talks a little about that. Nothing important, but it's a nice little addition for those of you that might be unfamiliar with what these types of sounds are. Moving on, after you've picked your sound, you can simply just close and it will load it right to your track. Down below, that's your three knobs, your tune decay and your control. These all move according to the knobs on your device and it is shown on screen. The control knob itself, if you do not have it assigned to anything, the one on screen will not move until it has a parameter assigned to it. You'll also see down below that the instrument effect button for the individual effect for that instrument. You do now have a control knob on screen to play with. Down below, that's your level faders, which represent the colors on the device and react to the movement on the device itself. As I move it on the tr s you'll see it moves on screen. Down below everything, and in every one of these tabs, there will always be the step sequencer here where you can select variations, including fills, turn motion on, select your instrument, select what you want this uh, bar graph to be here. This one is for velocity, so I can click and drag the different velocities for each step. I can also choose if I want it to be the tune, decay, or control, and that way be able to almost step record the decay here as I go along. A great way to visually see your motion because this is now step recording the motion. Again, this has to be on to hear these adjustments you are making on the tune, decay, and control. Velocity you hear no matter what. Again, a velocity here lets you set the default velocity for step sequencing. Any steps you lay down up here will be set at the velocity shown here. Clicking the sub steps, you can choose your division of your sub steps and then lay them down just like on your machine, including flams. Or turn it off like that. Also, your alternate sounds on certain ACB tones like the 707 snares and the FM tones all can lay down alternate sounds that sound different. The PCM samples are not capable of doing that. Moving on, going to the next tab here next to overall is instrument. This allows you to make changes to the instrument, much like getting into the instrument edit menu. You'll see first on the far left, you keep with your top level controls that tune and decay knob, control select here, and then the instrument effect. Also, you see a few other parameters that you find within the menu, and some of these are all dependent on the type of sam uh, sound you're using. ACB won't have as much as this. FM is going to have a couple other things, including morph. But you'll see here there's a coarse tune, a rate, a spread, bit reduction, all that kind of stuff. Everything you find in the menus are now presented neatly in a knob format. Moving to the right, each LFO section is right here with a depth knob and an assignment menu. Also, your instrument effects, based off of what you choose, it will populate with knobs for that. A good busy one you can see is the compressor and driver. This now gives you all these parameters that are on that effect right here in front of your face with knobs showing where everything is at. I don't know about you, but this makes a lot of sense to me, and I feel like I could get a little more into the sound design and tweaking these instrument effects now that I could see everything in this way. 
Let me know how you feel about it in the comments below. I'd love to know. Also, you can choose the color of that track. If it is part of a mute uh, or being muted by another instrument, the output being mix or assigns. And if you're doing instrument grouping where one instrument is kind of the master and all uh, the other selected ones are follower instruments, this is where you can choose if you want to group it with another. On the far right here is a few of the other more important uh, instrument edit ones, such as gain, pan, and your sends to delay and reverb. And again, your level fader. Moving again. Oh, one last thing. On the instrument, the next little drop-down section of tabs will be each of the instruments, so you can select them here one by one by choosing these. You cannot select them on the 8S or 6S track select buttons themselves and have that change. There's good and bad reasons for that. Uh, that could be later discussed, but for now it doesn't do that. We'll see if that's something that shows up later. Okay, moving on to the next is the EFX. This is where you can uh, pick and adjust all the parameters of your kit reverb, the kit delay, and the master effects. Really nice to have this here. You get to simply pick the one you want. You have all the knobs for all the parameters, and then they give you the nice benefit of all these send knobs. So you can immediately see where all these are at and dial them up and down as needed. Same thing with the delay. You can see here, all the based on the delay type, you're gonna get different knobs for different controls and all of your sends. You notice at the very end, there's a reverb knob. This is that new 2.0 feature where you can send your delay into the reverb. So those delay tails get some reverb to them and you can avoid sending your dry instrument to the reverb if you wanna do it that way. Fun way to do it, try it out. Also your master effects, based off of what you pick, your knobs will change and parameters will change to adjust. Next tab is your kit tab. Over here it gives you overall kit view of everything going on, plus some of the uh, parameter changes in the menu. One of the big ones here is you have a whole section for your external in, so you got it all in one nice little area to adjust your gains, pans, side chains, and sends. Again, if you're looking to name your kit, this is where you would do it. Simply click on name like this, and you can type out the name of the kit. Way simpler than using the knob button method on the machine. Bravo. Also, your kit level knob is here. This is a little drop-down menu to decide where you want your instruments to go. Again, this is the same as the mix or the sign out. And if there's any mute or choking, and also you can get a quick look at the control for each one, and again, also the external in, and the color of each track. A little redundant as the overall has similar things here with your control select here, your instrument name. You can see your colors, but you get to pick them in the kit menu here. Okay, your kit LFO is up on top here. You can pick your waveform here if it's tempo synced and the rate, which is really nice. And then a quick copy of instruments within the kits. If you're looking to move your bass drum over to another one or you like the control knob select you did and the filter cutoff and everything you liked about it except the sequencing on the kit side, all the sound side, you can copy it within the kit itself. This is no inter-kit copying that still is quicker, I, I believe, on, on the machine itself. We'll see if further things come in. And then on the right is your group, again, the instrument grouping. Uh, your red lit one will be the master, any green lit one is a follower instrument. Moving to the next and last screen is your pattern tab. As you can see, this is a nice 16-step TR style layout of all your instruments, including the accent lane and the trigger lane. So now you have everything here in front of you. You can see what it is. You can see them color-coded. You can see them weak beaded because they're dim. Substeps are yellow. Your dim reds are your half. It's a really nice way to really get a visual look at everything going on within your pattern. Again, you can pick all your variations right here, and you can do your sequencing for very, or fills one and two. Right up top left here, you can name your pattern simply by clicking it and typing in a name. You can choose the kit here. I, I tend to leave this on and the reference kit. That way, each pattern has its own kit, a very highly recommended um, method of doing things. And again, your accent level is here and your flam spacing is here. These are pattern menu items. 
You can find your auto fill in choice here, turning it on here, and the cycle of your auto fill. And again, you have a type and depth for your scatter knob and a tempo and shuffle up top here. You can adjust the scale, and it visually shows you with your downbeats here now on one and nine being a 30 second scaling. This will give you eighth triplets. So these all become downbeats, it comes a little quicker and then 16th triplets, and then back to 16th. The only thing you'll find additional here that you don't find on a couple of the other ones, besides in your sequencing, besides substeps and alternate sound, you also have last step mode. Turning this on, it flashes. Simply select the instrument you want to shorten the step length for, for each variation, or if you click a variation and simply go somewhere, like we go B and we say here, all instruments in B are going to shorten, except it looks like for bass drum. If you want to clear it, simply go to the end and click 16, and it lengthens all back up. And you have pattern copy. So if you're looking to copy patterns, this is where you would do it. You're going to pick which sequencing of the instrument you want, and then click where you want it to go. And it will simply copy that sequence down to another uh, track. Simple, I'm not gonna drag this on anymore. That's everything for this TR editor. Stay tuned for another video coming soon that features a few tips and tricks, shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts, and uh, a few ideas of mine. I want to thank everybody for supporting what I do and giving me the encouragement to keep doing it. So what I'm going to give you in this to go great with this TR editor is I've created a backup for the TR8S. I will have one shortly for the 6S, don't worry. But it's all blank. Every pattern has been blanked out and initialized, so there's nothing there, no motion recording, no sequencing of any sort. And every single kit has been initialized, and I was able to create a kit that had no instrument assigned to any of the tracks. Instead of loading a blank sample or just having a defaulted 808 style kit, these kits all come blank. So you're free to start assigning instruments to have the initial instrument. Otherwise, you play any sequencing on these blank kits, you won't hear anything. Uh, it, it's my gift to you. There'll be a link in the description down below uh, also, I am starting my Patreon, where if you want to further support and get more in-depth workshops, personal Zoom meetings, and more, come follow me there. You'll find the link also in the description. So I want to keep pushing this, guys. I hope you keep pushing me to do it. And as always, thanks for watching.